another video tutorial of painting and drawing with Bethany. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to prepare panels, um, so that's wooden panels, with traditional size and gesso um, using the old ingredients. Um, so it's a little bit like cooking, it's going to be fun, it's going to be messy, um, but I'm going to show you the process that goes behind that um, because, and this is because I am working on um, preparing for a workshop painting with egg tempera. So this is size and gesso for wood panels specifically for egg tempera painting. Okay, so we're going to start by making up some size. Um, which is basically a preparation to seal your wooden panel. So this is going to be made from rabbit skin glue um, which comes <laughs> nowadays in a so little pellet sometimes it's a fine powder um, depending on where you get it from so um, what we need to do to make this usable is to mix it with water and then to let it soak so that the granules swell up um, and then it's heated gently um, over a double boiler um, and then you have to keep it warm to make it usable. So we first of all need to just get some of the, uh, the rabbit skin granules. They, Nowadays it's still called rabbit skin, but to be honest, it's probably not rabbit skin. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's going to be a byproduct from um, the food industry, so it's it's um, more likely to be other animal skin than rabbit. Um, so what we need to do to start off with, I'm going to use um, a little jar um, to be my measuring pot. So what I want is one part. Um, rabbit skin to 15 parts water. Now you can use different ratios um, depending on how strong you want it to be. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to go for a, a 15 to 1 ratio and I'm simply going to do that by measuring out in my little pot the uh, the same amount of granules to water. Um, so there we go, we've got one pot. And then put the lid on so nothing else gets in there and spoils it. Um, and then we're gonna go for the water. And so again, just make sure you've got the same amount and count them as you go. So that's one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. 10, <laughs> we got last, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So, um, what I just need to do then is to let that soak. Um, I'm going to leave it overnight to do this tomorrow. So I'm going to put it in the fridge um, with a, a cover on the top to keep it nice. Um, you can use it after 30 minutes an hour if you're in a rush. Um, I, I, the longer you let the um, the granules swell up the better um, but don't leave it too long otherwise it will go off <laughs> so I'm going to keep it in the fridge to make sure it doesn't go off um, and 
uh, use that tomorrow to size some of the boards so that's a sealant over the wood and then it's the same mixture that you use for applying the gesso um, so that will be mixing in some chalk um, whiting um, and I will show you how to do that later so this has been now um, sitting overnight covered up and as you can see the granules are swollen up very nicely um, and so what we need to do now is to heat it up now um, if you've got a double boiler you generally use a double boiler I'm going to use um, a saucepan I'm going to fill with water um, and then uh, I'll sit the, the pot on the top of it so it doesn't get too hot So you want to heat it nice and gradually and um, you can't let this boil if it boils then it's no good at all you've got to keep it at a low heat you mustn't let your rabbit skin glue um, heat over 70 degrees C so you have to be careful that you're not making it too hot and people will use different methods for heating their glue. Double boiler is a main one, hot plate and um, as I'm doing using water in a saucepan and a plate um, above it. Um, I've even seen microwave being so used what we're doing but I would be very cautious about trying that. All of the granules or cubes or lumps of rabbit skin glue to dissolve into the water so it should turn into a nice liquid um, without any lumps in it but again you don't want to make it too hot otherwise it will um, ruin the glue mixture it will go off it will not um, be suitable to use so keeping it on a nice low heat and just gradually keeping an eye on it. <laughs> Rabbit skin glue and gesso become like jelly when they cool down. So if this occurs, you can gently reheat them um, to return them back to a fluid state. Make sure that when you're making up your glue that you only make as much as you need for that day because it will spoil quickly so use it within two days maximum of making it. Rabbit skin glue when fresh shouldn't smell bad. Uh, many people think that it will smell um, but it doesn't actually have that strong an odour to it. The only time that it will okay. smell bad is if it has gone off. So that is a very key way of telling whether so you've kept it nice too long. Smooth liquid. And just stirring it around, making sure that there's no no more lumps in there, it's all dissolved nicely. So turn off the burner. Um, but I will keep it in, so sort of just resting on that hot water so it will keep warm um, for a little bit longer while I'm working. So we're going to take this over now to um, our wooden boards and um, then we can apply the size. Okay, so we have our warm size.
size mixture. Um, so that's the rabbit skin glue and water. And these are the panels that I'm going to be sizing and then gessoing. So basically you just dip your brush in and apply some of the mixture over the wooden panel. When you're applying the size, make sure that you use thin coats. You so can I'm use two coats if you would like to, um, but make sure they are thin. If you make them too thick, they're prone to cracking. Just a little bit of extra strength. You could just do the front if you wanted to. And it's as simple as that. We just let that dry, so put that one off to the side. And get the next one. As you can see, sizing boards can be a long process, especially when you have quite a lot to do. Um, you can also apply a linen layer um, over the top of your wooden board to add extra strength and extra protection so if you were accidentally to drop your board sometimes wooden corners can splinter with the linen over the top of it it does give it some extra strength and this is glued on with the same mixture the same size um, as I am using just straight on the wooden boards and so you would use that as an in-between layer Once you've prepared your boards with size and it's been left to dry um, thoroughly, then you can prepare your panel with traditional chalk gesso, which is a soft absorbent primer and it's a standard ground for egg tempera painting. So you can uh, use acrylic gesso if you really need to, however it's a little bit less permanent in the long run. It has upsides and downsides, so it is more flexible as a gesso, um, but it, it doesn't have the same absorbency. And so to make our traditional gesso, we first of all need to make another batch of rabbit skin glue. So again, that's the same process, same ratios um, of making the rabbit skin glue. The next ingredient we need is chalk whiting, natural calcium carbonate. Um, you can use something called gypsum, which is where the name gesso comes from. The next thing I'm going to add is some titanium white pigment for extra brightness. Now I'm going to measure the proportions I need of each of these in a measuring cup which I've very um, handily just marked with a biro. <laughs> so the recipe that I'm going to use um, for my gesso is one part rabbit skin glue solution to three quarter parts chalk whiting and one quarter part titanium white. And so what I'm going to do is measure out the proportions of the glue um, and the chalk and the pigments that I need and put them into a separate pot. So we start off with the rabbit skin glue um, because the chalk should be added to the hot glue not the other way around. Now that I have four um, cups of rabbit skin glue in my separate pot, I'm going to measure out three cups of chalk whiting. So I'm adding 
um, the, the chalk whiting into the glue and when you do this you need to add it reasonably slowly don't stir it too soon let it sit um, and sort of just form almost like a, a little mountain in the middle of the glue and dissolve when you do stir then you have to be very gentle so that you don't put any bubbles into your mixture And so our gesso is going to form a ground. Now a ground is basically a fancy way of saying a surface that you coat um, your support with to make it better for painting on. So it's going to have the correct colour, the correct texture um, for the type of paint. Now for egg tempera what we want is a very very smooth surface um, which is why just so you build up in lots of layers with sanding in between and it makes this extra extra smooth surface for you to paint on. The other thing that it is is white and we need a white surface to work on so that it really shows up the colours of the egg tempera paints and makes them even more luminous and bright um, and reflects out um, light from the surface. So with um, oil painting normally you would colour your ground or your, your primer, your gesso um, so that it has a, a, a tone or a colour to it um, but for egg tempera we're using white and I'm going to make my gesso extra white by adding in um, titanium white pigment. So this is the same pigment that you use to paint with but I'm adding it in with the chalk to make the surface extra extra white um, and it will give it a lovely finish. So that's just one cup of um, pigment, titanium white pigment, um, three cups of chalk whiting and four cups of rabbit skin glue. As you stir in the mixture you need to stir very gently so that you avoid adding air bubbles. If you have air bubbles in your gesso then they will show up when you start painting the gesso on the boards um, and can be very very problematic. If you do get the occasional air bubble you can use a pin to pop them in the gesso um, when it's on the board um, and then when the sanding happens you can sand out um, some irregularities and um, coat them uh, with the next l a layer of gesso um, but it's better not to have that problem to start with so you need to stir very very gently um, and, and not over stir um, but the mixture does need to be well mixed some people will sieve their gesso through uh, a cheesecloth so that they get out any sort of extra grittiness that they don't want to have so the ex mixture is extra extra smooth as gesso is very brittle it doesn't suit to be put added to flexible supports um, such as paper or canvas so you can paint egg tempera 
um, directly on watercolor paper or on a um, card backed paper. Um, however, the ideal support is a firm panel. Now, traditionally, these would be made from oak or popular wood, um, but nowadays, an MDF plywood or um, a hardwood can be used. So to avoid warping, they should be at least 12 millimeters thick. You can see that my boards, um, for the purposes of the workshop that I'm running, are a little bit thinner than that. Um, but the thicker the wood, the better the support it will have and the less likely it will to warp and bend. Um, which can happen if you go to the National Gallery. Um, their Sainsbury wing is often referred to uh, by the, the staff as the, uh, the gallery of the wonky panels uh, because they are, um, through age, very, very warped, um, but they're, they're lovely paintings. So, um, working on MDF or plywood um, is a nice inexpensive way of starting off with egg tempera. And as you can see, I'm using a nice soft brush. Now you can use a hog bristle brush to apply your gesso. Um, I quite like using um, a hake brush, um, but that's just me. So as long as it's a large flat brush, then it will do the job for you. Um, and what you want to do is apply your gesso in one direction pretty much to start with. And then when you let it dry, when it's dried, you come back, put in another coat and you use the opposite direction um, for your brush strokes. And that's how you build up each layer is altering the direction that you're painting on the gesso. So you get, you need to build up several layers between four and 10 layers is recommended. Um, so the more layers, the smoother it's going to get. If you have coated your wooden panels in linen, then that linen will have a texture and you want to cover that texture over. So it will take more layers to cover that than if you're working on very smooth wood to start with. So as you can see, I've come back now that the first layer is dried and I'm going to add a second layer of the gesso. Now remember that you have to keep your um, gesso nice and warm. If it cools, it will start looking very jelly-like. Um, so it has to be nice and warm to be able to use. So I'm just checking over that the panel is completely dried and then I can apply the second coat um, in the opposite direction. Now the first few coats of gesso always take longer to dry and um, the more coats that are on there the quicker they will become dry um, because the water is absorbed into the dried gesso. The other thing to take note of, as I said, is if you get air bubbles, you can use a pen or use your fingers to press the gesso um, flat to the surface um, and take out some of the air bubbles. So it may take a few layers going over. If you do happen to have air bubbles, it may take a few layers to cover them over fully, um, but it is something that you just need to be aware of and keep a watch for. Between layers, you will want to sandpaper um, your gesso surface as well to make it extra smooth. You can sandpaper between every layer or you can sandpaper between every other layer, um, whichever suits you. So to make it really, really smooth, um, you can use either dry or wet sandpaper. Um, so wet sanding is generally recommended, but you can use dry sandpaper if that's what you have um, and that's absolutely fine as well. So here you can see me posing very elegantly in all of my safety gear as I sand down the panels. So as you can see, making 
panels with size and gesso um, from scratch can be quite a long and time consuming process, very labour intensive. Um, and so this is why quite often in workshops, artist workshops, it would be the job of assistants and apprentices to do much of this work. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video um, and it's seen a little bit of behind the scenes process behind the painting um, and hope to see you again for another video soon. <laughs>